Welcome to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, the Bullioness, a Silver Level Associate at 7K Metal, and please join me in welcoming return special guest A.G. Leveraged to the show. A.G. is a self-described voracious gold and silver collector with a comprehensive understanding of geopolitics. Today, we're going to be discussing what are zombie companies. (laughs) A.G., welcome to the show. Hi there, Dawn. How are you today? I'm doing awesome. I am so glad you have some time to share with us today and tell us a little bit about these zombie companies. So let's get to it. What exactly is a zombie company? A zombie company is a result of easy money. A zombie company is a result of low interest loans. A zombie company is a company that's taken out enormous loans and now they're heavily debt ridden. Um, a zombie company is a company that's looking forward to zero interest rates because they don't want bankruptcy. And if their enormous debts need not, paid, need not be paid back with interest, then they can step aside from bankruptcy altogether. So since 2009, there's been a lot of liquidity that corporations have, have, had, an ac- have had access to, cheap money, fast money low-interest loan money. And these zombie companies, as they're titled today, rather than investing in the building of factories for their own manufacturing, their own industrialization, rather than buying equipment to improve their efficiencies, rather than hiring help to become more proficient, rather than investing money in research and, and future products that they could, they could create for their audience, they haven't done that. Instead, they've used that easy, cheap money to buy back their own stocks to keep their valuation on the stock market high, and or they've spent it on bonuses for their higher-ups, for their upper management. So they've gone through all this money. And if I may, Don, run through a list of some of the examples of these so-called zombie companies. Please do. So we have... uh, Let's see, uh, Apple is $112 billion in debt. General Electric, one of the oldest, strongest American companies, $117 billion in debt. T-Mobile, $37 billion in debt. Sprint, $40 billion. AT&T, $191 billion. Verizon, $136 billion. Comcast, $113 billion. Charter Communications, $75 billion. Amazon, $60 billion. Ford, $159 billion. And the list goes on. There's CBS, there's Walmart, Microsoft, Duke Energy, Dell, Oracle, Pfizer, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, ExxonMobil, United Health, DuPont. All of the strongest companies, Caterpillar, Home, De- Home Depot, Amgen, American Airlines, Pepsi, the strongest companies that we can think of when we think of American strength, American corporation, American industrialization, American wherewithal. The strongest companies that come to date are all super heavily indebted. And it's troublesome because, again, as we've said before, our retirements, our investments, and our life savings are in the trust of them through our our many uh, programs that we have for retirement, through savings. Whether it's a CD or a mutual fund that we keep at a bank, whether it's a 401k, pension, deferred comp, uh, IRA that we have, these are all based on the bond market, which is on the floor right now, or the stock market, which, as we've just talked about, is super heavily indebted. Wow. So how did these zombie companies impact the regular brick-and-mortar stores? So... So let's say that that, um, that that you said, okay, are there any companies that are strong out there that maybe maybe aren't considered zombie companies as of yet, but they're having trouble with cash flow? So the brick and mortar examples of that is, and it's not it's not solely on companies that are the lar- larger, more expensive retail companies. It's also hitting liquidity problems, cash flow problems is also hitting companies that are considered affordable for the general public, such as Savers Inc., such as 99 Cent Store, uh, PetSmart. 
these companies are having some significant cash flow problems, but also companies like Neiman Marcus, uh, Pier 1 Imports, Fairway Markets, Charlotte Ruse, Guitar Center, J. Crew, BevMo, all of these companies, and that's just a small list, are having some serious liquidity problems. Now, on the one side, we can say, well, it's because we're ordering more things online, and therefore we're no longer having to go to a brick-and-mortar store. We're no longer having to go to a mall. And, yeah, there's convenience in that, and we get free, free mailings. But the other side of that is hundreds and thousands of people are going to be out of work. Hundreds of thousands of people that, that work for the retail marketplace, and that's been their entire life in retail, what are they going to do as more brick-and-mortar stores close by the day, especially right now as we come into this, this uh, last quarter of uh, 2019? We're going to see more and more and more of that. Uh, Forever 21 is, is closing. Uh, I believe they filed yesterday to close altogether. Um, and we're going to be hearing more and more of that as we, as we move forward. Wow. Is there a correlation between what's going on with the New York Fed injecting these large $75 billion liquid injections um, into the system that they're not calling QE, and what exactly are they calling them? What would the term be? You know, it's interesting that the, the New York Fed came out and called it organic injections is the term they're using right now. And you've got the economists on television, on all the media, saying that these are very good, positive, organic injections of money that are being made into the central banks. Um, they're not calling it liquid injections. They're calling it uh, organic repo market um, bond injections. It's hilarious. Ultimately, we're talking about printing. We're talking about digits on a screen. We're talking about things that are created from thin air. We're talking about just another definition of QE. And if anything tells us the state of our current economy, it's based on how our banks are, are behaving. And if they do not have money to lend to one another, if there's not enough money to lend out, then that should tell us where we're at. Regardless of what our television tells us, regardless of what our, uh, what our financial planner tells us, we can see for ourselves if the banks need liquid injections of fiat, there's something terribly wrong. If our biggest companies are super heavily in debt and sideways, there is something terribly wrong. If the bond market, which is really what we're talking about regarding these uh, money injections, if they need this kind of fluidity, there is something terribly wrong. And, and I'm, trying, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to be a realist uh, so that we can then make good decisions based on, on being informed. So going back to Amazon, I am an Amazon girl. You know, I buy so much from Amazon, got the Amazon Prime, and, you know, they say it's all free shipping. Is that actually a good thing for us based on what you've said? Why or why not? It is a terrible thing. It is a terrible thing. It's, um, it reminds me of a friend of mine recently he said to me, that uh, his son was eligible for, for free uh, junior college. And I'm, I'm not certain what, what the requirements were to be eligible for the free junior college, but he was telling me what a bonus it was. And I said, well, as long as you recognize that at some point someone is paying for that. So the same happens with Amazon. Amazon ships for free to you and I, but it, it's putting the post office out of business. And that freeness... Uh, remember, we said that Amazon's in the whole $60 billion. Part of that $60 billion is, is paying someone to ship that over to your home. So, so we're paying for it. And, and I'm going to bring up something we brought up a day or two ago, which was every time that something is free, it hits our economy. And the way that it hits it is uh, we brought up if, uh, if, if the, uh, let's say, junior colleges became free for everyone – and that required a 10% increase in our, in our liquid in order to pay for the free college for, for everyone at a junior college level, that would mean that we would face approximately a 10% increase in inflation on things at our perimeter. Perhaps not across the board, but my point is that money would have to come from somewhere, so we would pay it, all of us as a whole, 
for those people who chose to go to that junior college. And the same thing occurs with Amazon. When Amazon does free shipping, it hits us on the other side in the form of inflation because now Amazon gets that much more indebted. Their $60 billion is small compared to what it's going to be by next year. It's going to be gargantuan. Does that make sense, Don? Incredible. So, but what would the alternative be then? What do you propose that we do? The alternative is that everyone starts to be responsible for themselves. The alternative is that we go back to business 101 and we run everything like, like a capitalist business should run, that things function on profit, that things are purchased based on what, can, what one can afford, not based on credit. We, what we're doing because of this credit is we're living today based on the profits of tomorrow. We're actually bringing in to current moments what, what we're eligible for 30, 40, 50 years down the road because we're actually creating so much credit, so much artificial cash that it exceeds our, uh, the, the good that can back it. The goods being gold, silver, oil, land, you name it, businesses, um, anything, uh, commercial properties. There's more cash, there's more credit, there's more debt than any of those tangible things to back that debt. And that's why it's, it has to come at some point to a close. It must come to – we can't just keep printing and, and having more credit available to pay for the last debt. You know, how long? So I, I, right now, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Don. No, no. All I was just going to say is, so we have to also bring it down on a personal level. So the 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 balance is understanding that nothing remains the same. That there, everything's going to continue to evolve. But what can we do on a personal level? You know, in in. Out, outside of the Amazons, everything, all the grocery now is delivery. All that stuff is going on now. It's creating a more convenient world. So is that good or do you have a different idea to how should we on a personal level interact with these kind of things? Don, it's seemingly convenient. On the surface, it's very convenient. But in the end, it makes our lives more expensive. It, it forces us to work longer and harder hours. It forces us away from the, the things we love to do or the people that we love. It's going to force us to become more robotic and more routine. And so in the end, that, that doesn't help us. It forces us to be more on our phones, more on our tech, and that's how we spend our lives. And so from that perspective, no, it, it doesn't help. Now, can we encourage Amazon to stop giving things for, away for free? No. Can we encourage Amazon from being so affordable and putting out all these businesses at the perimeter out of business because no one can compete with their price point? No. Uh, can, we, can, can we force any of these companies, Shell Gas or, or Kmart or Sears or anyone, to improve their ability to, to, to spend money? to be more responsible about how they use this money that they're getting for cheap or for free. No. All we can do is, is, is get ourselves out of debt the best that we can, not follow these corporations or our government as an example, and continue to accrue things that we do not need, and, and be more self-sufficient. I've said it a million times. Learn to cook at home, grow as much of your own food as you can, and work on your own skills building. Work on your own ability to grow and to learn as much as you can. Because the world is changing quickly. It cannot stay the zombie credit idea forever. It is a debt paradigm that is going to become short-lived. And proof of that is the amount of liquidity that corporations, banks, bonds, that everything requires in order to keep this thing afloat. So I love that saying, as the phoenix rises from the ashes, that's what the self-sufficiency is, making wise decisions, preparing that the wills at some point will fall off. This is something that cannot sustain itself forever. So what would your tip of the day be then as we close? My tip of the day is, as the title says, zombie company, question mark, got gold, question mark. Got gold is like got milk. Right now, we need not worry if we're stackers. We need not worry if we're, we're staying consistent on our purchases of precious metals on a monthly basis. 
We need not worry because we know that tomorrow, should something change regarding the valuation of the dollar, of our real estate, of our retirement portfolio, of whatever it is that we're, we're invested in, because we have our precious metals in our possession, we are going to be just fine. And if we can encourage our friends, our family, our neighbors, our clients, whomever we love or respect at our perimeter, to do the same for themselves, then we'll all be that much better for it. Correct? Absolutely. So in closing, I want to say much gratitude to our show sponsor, SoberPreparedness.com. Do subscribe to our channel. Do share this video with others. It's pertinent, timely information. And do click on the link in the description below the video to visit the website today. And join our dynamic team led by the infamous AG Leveraged and myself, and together we'll soar. Thank you so much, AG, for your time and dedication to getting this message out. We know it will make a difference to so many as the monetary system continues to shift. And until our next segment, we want to leave you with these words of wisdom. This price manipulation of gold and silver is your friend until it's not. So take advantage of lower spot prices while they are low. Bye for now.